back end of the show where we peek beyond the curtain of the visible world to divine insights into anything that plagues you this night. Love, money, your future, your past. Strange shadows clinging to the edge of your vision. Allow me, amazing Aurora, the masterful mystic, to help guide you on your spiritual, metaphysical journeys. You will find no mystic better suited to the task, I assure you. I have gone to the furthest reaches of this dimension, traveled through distant realities, all to bear witness to its wisdom and return it here to share it with you, my listener. This is the greatest purpose of my lives, so do not hesitate to reach out to me. I can already feel that you want to. There is something that weighs on you. Allow me to offer my experience and help you solve the mysteries gnawing at your soul. Ah, it looks like our first caller is here already. Let's take a listen, shall we? Welcome, caller. You are live. Hello? Is this the amazing Aurora? Yes, it sure is. Tell me why you have called. Yeah, so what are the chances I win the lottery and become a millionaire in the next two weeks? You see, I sort of made a bet with my buddies one night over who could obtain uh, the most money in like a two-week period. So I've been spending every single dollar I get out of my paycheck from scratch tickets. Whoever wins the bet uh, gets the money of the others, and I kind of want to buy myself a new car. Oh, I see. Well, what a fantastic question to kick off our night. When it comes to the lottery, I am afraid there's a bit of a misconception. You do not need to appeal to financial influences. Instead, you need to appeal to the force of luck. Trying to attract money will not work. Because in a lottery situation, money is a secondary force. You need to attract luck. Luck itself is an active force in our reality. It can influence and be influenced. You simply need to learn how to appeal yourself to it. Now, firstly, and this may seem counterintuitive, but trust the amazing Aurora. Do not buy any more tickets. The amount of tickets you possess will not increase your favorability to the force of luck. In fact, It can be detrimental to it. Luck is playful. Luck likes long odds. You need to show luck that you would make a good vessel for its power. Lottery winners make great acolytes of luck, knowingly or not. So here is what you will do. Take all the tickets you currently have and place them in a bag. You will shake, shake, shake this bag. Get it all well and mixed up. Then you will reach in without looking and pluck one ticket from the pile. This shall be your ticket. Now, you 
you will relinquish your other tickets as an offering to the power of luck. This will increase your favorability. To do this, you will spend the next two weeks carrying the bag with you and leaving tickets in places for other people to find without them knowing. Slip it into someone's bag. Place it on their desk. It is important that they do not catch you doing this. At first it may be hard to decide where to place them or who to bestow them upon. Do not overthink it. The more you do it, the more intuitively you will know exactly what you should do. This is the guidance of luck. You are spreading the gospel of luck. This will not go unnoticed or unappreciated by luck. Now, I cannot guarantee that you will win the ultimate cash prize. But becoming a dealer of luck will have great long-term impacts on your life. Okay? Trust the amazing Aurora. Now, let's take our next caller. Hey, is it this masterful mystic? Yes, you have reached she. I found this number scratched on the inside of a gas station bathroom stall, and ever since then, there's this knocking that keeps following me around. I was calling today to ask you about it. Specifically, I was wondering if you might know how to stop it. I've been awake for 26 hours now, and I really would like to get some sleep, so yeah. Oh, this is actually something we have dealt with on the show before. Long-time listeners may remember this happening some time ago. A caller who also heard knocking after exiting a gas station bathroom. I instructed them how to be rid of it and told them to scratch my number in there case it should happen to anyone else. I had a feeling it might. The knocking is not malicious in nature, so you are in no danger. But I know the knocking must be quite frightening and terribly annoying. Luckily, this is actually quite a simple case. You will return to that bathroom. While you are doing your business, you will hear the knocking. You will say loudly, but not impolitely, Sorry, this stall is occupied. I'll be out in a minute. You will finish your business, and when you exit the stall, you will say, also loudly, but not impolitely. I'm finished now. Go ahead. Then you will wash your hands and leave. The knocking will not follow you anymore. It is that simple. I would avoid trying to use that bathroom again in the future, however. Now, Let's take our next caller. Hi, Aurora. Uh, thanks for taking my call. My name is Jean, and I've been stressing out a lot about my job recently. I work at a social media company. Lots of changes are happening, and things are a little hectic. I'd like to know if things are going to improve at my job, or if everything is going to come crashing down. Thank you. Love your show. Hello, Jean. For you this evening, I would like to consult my crystal ball. 
just so I can get a clearer picture of your specific situation. Stress can be a catalyst of change or a consequence of it. Sometimes change is good, sometimes it is not. So stay with me on the line for a moment, Jean, as I look into the crystal. And as I do this, I want you to focus on opening yourself up to receiving guidance. Asking the universe to channel its message for you here to my crystal so that I am able to reveal it to you. Yes, that's it. Very good. Very good. Oh, wonderful. Jean, I have a vision for you. It comes to me in the sign of a bird. It suggests to me that it may be time to spread your wings and fly on to new horizons. I would recommend setting your sights on new skies. When you are unsure, look for the birds. Listen to their songs. They may bring you messages to aid you in times of trouble. All right. Hello, my next caller. You have reached the Masterful Mystic. How can I guide you this evening? My name is James Sunderland. I'm calling in about a letter I received from my wife. It reads, In my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. The bit that surprised me is, my wife died three years ago of a disease. I'm calling in to see if Mary really is in Silent Hill waiting for me and where she could be. This is quite a delicate situation for you. When those we had a close connection to, for better or worse, leave this world, It does not erase the impression they leave on our souls. While it is not uncommon for the departed to reach out to those they left behind, I cannot tell you for certainty if your wife waits for you in Silent Hill. But I believe you must go, James. You have received an invitation. Silent Hill has asked you to come. It will not ask twice. Best to go of your own volition. There is nothing more I can say on this matter. You know where your answers lie. Let's take another caller now. Hello, caller. You are live with the amazing Aurora. Hi. I have a bit of a hypothetical for you. If I were to, say, try and summon an outer god about a hundred feet tall, lots of tentacles, possibly with a desire to enslave and or devour all of humanity, how successful would I be? Purely hypothetically, of course. Follow-up question, are my odds better with live sacrifices or dead ones? Hmm, 
quite the hypothetical question to ponder in these late hours. Unfortunately, caller, you would not be terribly successful at summoning any outer gods in this reality. For one, they do not like to be summoned by mortals, and it is quite rude to wake someone from the middle of their nap. They will not be very receptive to your endeavors. You would also need to travel to the in-between realms and perform a very specific series of tasks if you would like the possibility for an audience. As for your sacrifice, it is not so much important whether it is alive or not. He does not even need to be a person. The sacrifice is a physical representation of your dedication and your allegiance to that God. I suggest thinking quite carefully on what would be the most impactful offering from you specifically. All right, next caller. You are live on the air. What guidance can I offer you this evening? Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. So, I've been having these really vivid dreams for a while now. Like, really vivid. In one dream, I'm in this desert market trying to buy supplies for something. In another, I'm standing near a campfire and someone is trying to sell me weapons. There's one where I'm trapped in some kind of escape pod, I think, and I'm talking to someone about a crash or an accident. There's another where I'm walking through a jungle and I think something is hunting me and then someone I can't see starts talking to me, offering to help me somehow. And there's another one where I'm walking with someone through a forest and I keep hearing these weird sirens. There's a bunch more and they all seem like the same person or presence is in each dream with me, just in a different role. Like there's someone else creating these dreams for me, and they're in the dreams with me. Do you... can you tell me what this might mean? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, isn't that something? My friend, I think you may just have a bit of a mistake in you. These are not dreams, so much as they are travels. You are not dreaming of these places, of these happenings. They are not something your mind has made up. They are places that exist, things that are actually happening somewhere out there. There are an infinite number of realities, and some people have the ability to visit them in their dreams. I believe you are one such traveler. These are not dreams, so much as they are experiences. Many travelers are not aware of their gifts. They simply mistake the travels for overactive imaginations or simple dreams. But they are not. It seems like your ability is quite impressive. With some work and effort, I think you would find that you'd be able to manifest your power to quite an incredible degree. I would start with keeping a very detailed record of your travels in a journal or 
An audio log, perhaps. Perhaps for the presence you are constantly feeling. Given that this is the same presence. It is likely a fellow traveler. Travelers sometimes have partners that they move through these worlds or scenarios with. It is just as likely that they do not understand what is happening any more than you do. It is possible they are listening right now with the same questions on their mind. I suggest focusing on gaining more strength, more lucidity when you're in these dream worlds. Once you do, it is likely you will be able to communicate with your fellow traveler. And together you can learn to develop and extend more control and influence over your travels. So it feels less like you are simply a passenger to these experiences. Quite an exciting time for you. Take my advice and document them well. I recommend finding a way to share them. Put them out into the world. Perhaps your partner will find them and you can connect in this waking reality. Good luck. Next caller. Uh, hello? Hello? Hello, uh, I, I... This is... Is this... Amazing Aurora, the masterful mystic as it was advertised? Yeah, I'm just gonna take it as it that I didn't get the wrong number here. Um... I don't really have a question towards any, like, divination or something or anything fancy like that, but... One thing that's been plaguing my mind recently is... Uh, just a few days back... Uh, I, I didn't sleep well. I, I had a dream, and in that dream I could have sworn that I saw a squirrel riding a surfboard on a massive wave that was just rushing through the street in front of my house, and I could have sworn it waved to me and, and showed me a sign, but, but I can't remember what was on that sign. And I, I don't know, I just have a feeling that that means something. Do, do, you, have any, do you have any idea about that? Does that mean something? Uh, I, I don't know if you can actually answer my question or... If I'm, if I'm making sense here, but it would be really, really nice of you to answer me. Um, and uh, one thing in the advertisement, I saw something about uh, demonic possession. Uh, th- that was just a PR gig, wasn't it? Nah, I'm sure it was. Uh, anyway, uh, have a nice day. <sighs> this is a classic example of misdirection and misinterpretation of dreams. Dream interpretation can often be more nuanced than you imagine. In this instance, what was on the sign was not what was important here. Merely that it existed Your dream itself is the sign. And although the imagery of the squirrel and the surfboard going by your house is rather comical, it is a message being sent to you. Squirrels as symbols are resourceful, flexible, and rather quick-witted. They are known for planning for their futures, storing nuts for the winter, while also being playful and light-hearted creatures. Water, of course, has many associated meanings, though in this instance, 
I believe it is symbolizing a change to come. Because the wave is large, and as you say, crashing in front of your house. This is very likely a major life change heading your way. Combining these elements, I believe your dream is a sign that while there are major changes headed your way, you should heed the guidance of the squirrel. Prepare yourself now for any possibility on the horizon. But don't let it overshadow the joys or laughter of your everyday life. This is a fantastic message for you. And I encourage you to hear it. As for your other concern, I do not believe you have anything to worry about in that department. Best of luck to you, caller. Now, let's take the next call. Uh, hi. Uh, so, my question is, uh, uh, here's a little bit of background. Uh, when I was six years old, I, w I slept in this very large bedroom and I used to cover myself with a blanket because I was afraid of the dark. Well, uh, one night, uh, I guess it was just way too hot under that blanket, so I decided to take it off. And right next to my bed, I see this tall, dark figure with a pale, whitish uh, face. And I guess as soon as I saw it, I uh, recovered myself with a blanket and uh, fell asleep. So my question is, uh, with your expertise, can you tell me, was that thing real, or was it just an illusion? Hello. First, allow me to alleviate any fears that you have. Though I'm sure this experience was quite frightening, especially for such a young child. I do not believe you have encountered anything malicious. If you had, it would be much more obvious, and the nature of your call would be quite different. However, whether this entity was, as you say, real or not, is irrelevant. The experience was real. It happened. You saw it. You felt it. And reality can be very subjective. As for what it was, there are many possibilities. I cannot be absolutely sure without speaking with you more about it. However, I would be willing to bet my crystal ball that what you encountered was an observer. An observer is just what their name implies. An entity who merely observes. Watches without interference. Many people have seen one in their life much like you when they are young children. Children are born with the innate ability to peek behind the curtain, if you will. They are more in tune, more open to the workings that go beyond our generally perceived reality. As we age, we tend to lose this ability, though it is possible to regain or retain it. This experience you had is not one to fear or dwell on. I think you will find a lot of people who share a similar experience or story. Many who never mention it because they write it off as a dream or they are simply worried what people might think. But 
If we would open ourselves up a bit more, I think we'd find we actually have quite a bit more in common than we'd realized. Okay, let's hear what our next caller has to say. Hello, amazing Aurora. My name is Audie. I am a long-time viewer and a first-time caller. I was just wondering, I have a friend who has been out traveling for over half a year at this point, and she has to face a big decision here in the coming months of whether she should return home as she originally planned or if she should stay at her new place of residence for longer than she originally expected and potentially make a living for herself in this new country. She has been enjoying her time there immensely, but it really is just a question of if she should prioritize comfort over exploration at this point. And she is decidedly unsure about which path would be the correct one to take. So I thought it would be nice to have a second opinion. Please let me know what her fortune has in store for her. I dearly hope it's good news. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, Audi. It seems like your friend is in quite the spot. I have to say, things already look good for her, purely for the fact that she has friends looking out for her. It is so important in our lives, especially when faced with a big decision, to find people we can rely on. People we can talk to and get opinions from people who will listen and have our best interests at heart. Knowing you have support of friends or family puts you in a place where you can more readily take those leaps of faith because they will be there to catch you if you stumble. I think that whatever your friend decides it is important to remember that no decision is set in stone. You can change your mind. You can do so as many times as you need to. I don't think this is a choice that anyone can make for her. What they can do, what you can do, is encourage her to choose the path she feels is right and remind her that you will walk with her down either one of them. And if she decides to turn around or jump across to the other, you will go with her. It sounds like your friend is a very brave woman to have already taken the leap that she has. Being in such a new place, exploring a whole new world. That takes a lot. And anyone with that much courage is going to be okay. Hi Aurora, thank you for having me. I found you watching late night commercials. You have the same name of one of my favorite YouTube ASMR channels. What are the chances? I'm a big believer in synchronicity, so I just have to call you. I'm calling all the way from Italy. Being put through has been a nightmare. Anyway, I'm about to get a new job. Can you tell me what it will be like? What can the masterful mystic tell me about my future? 
Hello, my friends. Lovely to have you calling in from such a long way. Firstly, you are right to be looking for those synchronicities. When we notice things lining up, it usually means that they have something to tell us. Your openness to receiving and acting on these signs already puts you in an advantage moving into your new job. I would be willing to bet you follow those patterns, either consciously or subconsciously, and they have brought you to it. This means you are exactly where you are supposed to be at this moment in time. Continue to be open to the signs around you as you take on your new role. Pay attention to things, the happenings, the people around you, and continue to follow your instincts, and I think you will do just fine. Okay, let's hear the next caller. Hi, Aurora. My name is Dana, and uh, I've always wanted to be an author. I have so many ideas for urban fantasy novels. They're based on creatures I've dreamed about. They're quite real, you know. Well, of course, you would know. But with my busy day job, I don't have much time to write. I have some savings that I can live off of for a year or so and it's very tempting to quit my job and just write but at the same time it's terrifying so my question to you is will 2023 be a good year to take the plunge or will I just end up as another starving artist? Thank you. Hello, Dana. It sounds like you have some big dreams that you want to reach for. Some wonderful stories to tell. I think that if there are stories within you, then you should very much find a way to let them out, to share them. It seems like you are stuck on a very major decision. But perhaps consider that you do not have to make such an extreme choice, one way or the other. I encourage you to look for a medium. Not meaning myself, of course, but an in-between solution. Perhaps instead of taking one large plunge, it would do you well to wade into it. Slowly. That way you are not overwhelmed. The stories within you will find a way to be told. Trust that, and trust yourself. It is a journey, sometimes best taken, one step at a time. Hello, caller, you are on the air. Tell us, what is on your mind? Last year, I moved back to the capital in search of work. I'm freelance and it's gone pretty well, but I've recently realized that I'm not a very good version of myself anymore. I struggle to do things for future me and I fear I'm laying the groundwork for regret, like I'm wasting my 20s or something. <laughs> I work in audio and I have plenty of hobbies, 
I suppose I could give them more time. Uh, but I'm wondering if I need to take a step back and uh, ask some big questions. Would the great, mystic, amazing Aurora be able to shed some light on what's in store for me? Or the fates of laid bare? Thank you. It sounds like you are feeling pretty uncertain about yourself. You say that you struggle to do things for your future self. That you are not setting things up for them very well. Yet you have made such a big move specifically to find work. To make a better life for yourself. I would say that shows you have the best interest of your future self at heart. And you are willing to do things to take care of them. The fact that you have this moment of strife and reflection shows a great depth of character. And not only that, but... The fact that you reach out to express these feelings, to look for advice, even in the most unlikely places. You say you fear that you are laying the groundwork for regret, but the things you have done take more courage than you give yourself credit for. It may sound counterintuitive, but the way you think of your future self, the way you yearn to provide for them, it is a great display of selflessness. You have put yourself in uncomfortable positions, all for the purpose of building something better. That takes courage. No matter the outcome, that is not something to regret. There may be a version of yourself that you're striving for, and you should continue to do so. But the version you are now is just as deserving of life and joy. Do not withhold these things from yourself. Do not withhold them as a reward for your future self or as a punishment for the you of today. You deserve it now as much as you do tomorrow. No life lived is a life wasted. like we have time for one more caller. Privyat uh, uh, <coughs> Aurora, my name is Vasily Prokliati. Very sorry for uh, bad English. I'm from Vladivostok, but moved to American Forest and... Uh, never mind, it's not that important. I wonder if maybe you can tell me for John. It's hard for me to be making friends. I am not, uh, how you say, people person. It's a curse, truly. I live in a remote place, yet wish I was not so lonely. Sometimes, once in blue moon, a stranger stumbles across my cabin. They stay for a short time, but always so quick to leave, I don't understand. Am I so unlikable? Or Japanese, illegal final caller, stole a small 
Nein. Sorry. Uh, rats in basement. Big rats. Anyway, sorry for rambling. Uh, tell me fortune or uh, what will come of me, Vasily Procliati. Please, and thankings you. Hello, Vasily. Sounds like you have quite the conundrum. Beyond giant rats in the basement. Perhaps you will not believe me, but I tell you truly. There is no curse that cannot be broken. You can become this person that you wish to be. Firstly, if someone does not wish to stay, there is no amount of persuasion that will turn them into a true friend. And I am sensing that is what you are looking for. Real, true friendship. To connect with others on a deeper level. That is possible for you. I understand it can be difficult to have many chances to meet others living in the forest. But fortunately, I have good news for you. The world is more connected now than it ever has been. I think you should consider trying to make some friends online. You will need a computer for this, but it should not be difficult for you to acquire. I know that can sound overwhelming. But I assure you, even the oldest dogs can learn the newest tricks. The internet has many places to go and people to talk to. It can do wonders to help you build your social skills and get comfortable talking with people. You may even make some really great friends that you can meet up with. Trust the masterful mystic Aurora. Give it a try. And with that, dear audience, that is our show tonight. We are out of time for this evening. But you know where to find me. I will be back on the air tomorrow night. And I hope to see every one of you there. As always, thank you for tuning in. And for spending your night tonight with the amazing Aurora, the masterful mystic. Good night, dear listener.